Good day everyone and welcome to yet another series of uh, radiographic interpretation made easy. This is case 8 and I am Dr. Lahari from the Department of Oral Medicine and Radiology. The steps in radiographic interpretation like we have seen before are radiograph uh, taken identifying which radiograph uh, has been taken, the normal anatomical landmarks seen in the area, faults if any, uh, tooth or te teeth of interest and in the tooth or teeth of interest identifying what we can see in the crown, the root, height of alveolar crest, periodontal ligament space, lamina dura, alveolar bone proper, radiographic diagnosis. So today we have a radiograph taken uh, for the third quadrant. This is an intraoral periapical radiograph and the teeth seen will be uh, 3, 4, 3, 5, 3, 6 and 3, 8. So we can visibly see that the 3, 7, there is spacing here. So it has to be the 3, 7 that is missing. Um, the radiographic faults that we can see are some amount of enamel peel that we can see here probably because of uh, that has happened during the handling of this film. The normal anatomical landmarks that you would generally see in a mandibular molar region should be the external oblique ridge also called as the ascending ramus that's where it is. Uh, pointed out by the yellow line followed by the mandibular canal also called as inferior alveolar canal that's that's where the location is pointed by the orange line lower border of the mandible you don't see it always in all radiographs but if you've noticed in this one depending on the angulation of the way the way the radiograph has been taken you can see the uh, lower border of uh, the mandible here the green line followed by the mental foramen. Now this is something which you have to look for very carefully because generally between the premolar roots you would see a faint radiolucency and that is what is the uh, outline of the mental foramen which is here pointed out by the red dotted line. Then finally you also see some um, step ladder pattern trabeculae which is again very typical of the mandibular molar region. Right so more on uh, let's look at the teeth or tooth of interest um, visibly we can see that there is a uh, one particular tooth which is of interest this which is the 3 6 you can see a well-defined radio opacity on the distal aspect of the crown involving enamel dentine and definitely involving the pulp of the tooth because it's a large radio opacity with a density comparable to that of amalgam restoration it definitely looks very very dense and has to be an amalgam you also see a well demarcated radiolucent rim that is seen below the restoration pointed out here by the orange arrow marks involving the dentine as well as the pulp which is suggestive of secondary caries involving the pulp of the tooth. Moving on to the root, you can see that the mandibular molars has two roots here but what interestingly we can see here is that there is root resorption which is pointed out by the yellow arrow marks. Uh, the roots seem to be fuzzy and you can't make out the, um, the definition of the root apex anymore which gives you an indication that there must be root resorption. Moving on to PDL which is also the periodontal ligament space and lamina dura. This is something very important to observe in any teeth which has pulp involvement. right? So in this case what we see is that there is widening from the middle one third onwards of both roots and which become gradually fuzzy and lost towards the apex of both the roots. So if you were to follow the outline of the PDL space you will see that you can see clearly somewhere from the cervical to the uh, middle one third of the root but somewhere at the apex of the root you can't see the PDL anymore. Similarly even the lamina dura appears to be lost at the apex of the tooth, uh, both the roots in fact. <coughs> Moving on the alveolar bone proper is actually where you're seeing this uh, mixed radio opaque and radiolucent appearance at the apex of both the roots. So it's important to write this finding in the bone because this radiolucency is in the bone and not in the root itself. So uh, it is ill-defined 
and uh, it covers about 1 by 1 cm and is suggestive of uh, an inflammatory bone response. So when you're looking at a mixed response like this, uh, it is definitely uh, due to inflammation in the bone and you can visibly see that there is pulp involvement as well as root resorption and loss of PDL and lamina dura. So uh, what are we looking at? Let's just summarize. We've seen that there is um, a restoration and uh, uh, radiolucency beneath it which is involving the pulp of the tooth both the roots seem to have lost their PDL and lamina dura there is root apex resorption and a mixed radio opaque radiolucent lesion involving both root apices so it's most likely uh, looks inflammatory in origin and can be called as rarefying ostitis you wouldn't be wrong if you call this as a, a chronic periapical abscess as well so our differential diagnosis would involve uh, osseous dysplasia generally the middle stage or the second stage of uh, cemental or osseous dysplasia where you see both mixed uh, radiolucent and radioopaque ap appearance and of course you can also include osteomyelitis right so that brings us to the uh, end of this uh, radiographic interpretation thank you for listening if you have any doubts any comments or feedback please uh, feel free to write to me thank you